How's it going everyone and welcome back to another exciting Maya tutorial. In this tutorial I want to talk about nodes and how the node editor works in Maya. It's a very important thing, it's actually the DNA of your object or whatever you're creating in your scene in Maya. It's not clearly seen immediately when you do create that specific object or whatever you're trying to create in Maya. So let's have a look at how this actually looks under the hood with using the node editor. Let's go. Now I'm in Maya here and um, to illustrate this, I'm just going to quickly go under create polygon primitives and create a cylinder. And now what you can see is that, um, all right, there is a couple of nodes that exist in the um, attribute editor, but uh, those nodes are generally seen if you go under window and click on node editor. So windows node editor. And now um, this is where you can have the full power of creating nodes within Maya. Um, let's say, for example, if you click tab, you can create anything that comes to mind. But to keep this simple, um, let's select the cylinder and I selected the input and output connections of this cylinder. And now what you can see is all the input and output connections of the cylinder. Now, how, wh what are we seeing here? Well, the cylinder shape node is actually the one that's defining the collection of CVs that we have here or vertices that are creating this shape and that's grouped under uh, this uh, cylinder shape all right now um, in addition to creating basic forms in maya like for example the cylinder you get another node which represents the polycylinder history if you will and you're able to change the radius for example of um, of your cylinder the height of the cylinder, uh, the, the amount of subdivisions. So let me show you this um, in terms of wireframe on shaded. So when I start changing this, you can see what's going on, right? So I'm changing the amount of subdivisions uh, and you can change the amount of subdivisions in its height as well and also in the subdivision caps, all right? So this, this node gives you that. It pipes in and feeds in directly into this shape node. And then what we have is an initial shading group. So by default, Maya creates this Lambert shader that actually is applied immediately on the object. And that shader is actually defined by this initial shading group. All right. Now, um, finally, we have a transform node and this transform node allows us and stores all the information of where this specific object is located in the scene, right? That's what the, uh, this node does, all right? So you need all of these sets of nodes to create this cylinder in the scene. Uh, you might think, okay, so do I need this history node? No, you can select it, click delete. You're going to have exactly the same thing in the scene but now, watch what happens. You don't have the history anymore if you start searching for it in your um, attribute editor here. It's not there. All right. So um, if I delete this shape, you will see the cyl cylinder is gone. So if I undo, you can quickly see that um, you need all of these nodes in order to um, get this shape going in Maya. Now, for example, watch what happens. If I create a polygon and, for example, a sphere, here we go. This is the input for the sphere. So there is no history on the sphere to, to, to change. And um, and that's, that's what I get for now. So if I select and list it out, now this is where I get also the initial shading group, the sphere shape, and this is when I get the history, right? It appears there when I listed all the inputs and outputs of that specific object in the scene. Now here as well, I can change the subdivisions, all right, and the radius and so on. I have the transform node and the initial shading group. So this initial shading group by default, if I start changing the color of it and let's say put it to red, uh, then you can see that all of the um, elements in the scene that are 
using this initial shading group or shared so you can see how these nodes work now my sphere uh, and my cylinder are connected to the same node so the information flows this way right um, if i wanted to change the attributes so that i have a different shader on the cylinder for example i can right click on my mouse say assign new shader and for example say fong right now what happens in the node editor is that you get um, a new shader applied to uh, the cylinder shape and it's a fong um, shader that's piping in into the now fong shading group that's what maya needs it creates a shading group that collects all of the information of the material and the shapes that are coming into that shading group now the sphere retains the initial shading group uh, because i didn't apply any other material to this all right so this covers what the node editor can do for you in maya in its most basic um, aspect so don't forget to uh, like and subscribe uh, and follow along in the discovery of how maya works and i'll see you in the next one